Tonight, seven people perish in a fatal road accident which occurred in Chang, West region of the country. The bus that was involved in the set road accident left Bamenda and was heading to Boya in the South West region of Cameroon. This newscast will tell you how it was a bitter pill for local inhabitants to swallow. In this edition of the news as well, baccalaureate candidates in Lebialem, South West region of the country are currently writing the examination in Chang of the West region. They say that they escaped the socio-political unrest in the South West region of the country. Plus, roadside traders at Marche, New Daido here in the economic capital Douala have denied to respect administrative order and have continued to display their goods on the pavements and on the floor. They are going to be telling us in this edition of the news that the site that has been put at their disposal by administrative authorities are expensive and also uncomfortable. Those are headlines. We shall be right back with the details. Stay with us. Good evening to you ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. It was a shocking incident, the accident that occurred along the Bafusam Boya Highway that was last night. The vehicle that left Bamenda had a breakdown and fell off a valley that was in Chang, west region of Cameroon, leaving five persons dead. Several persons were injured as a result of the incident that took place one day ago. Inonsen as it tells us more in this report. It was in a market in the town of Chang, west region of the country, that this inter-urban 70-seater bus belonging to the Mogamo Transport Agency crashed. At about 11 o'clock, just discovered that it was a tire puncture. Five persons died in the bus that was heading to the southwest from the northwest region. Four passengers died on the spot and one died later in the hospital. Some people they cut their hands, the woman cut the hand up and the press. Everybody me I just have some few good. Survivors sustained major and minor injuries and were transported to the Chang District Hospital. Thank God for the uh, police that they intervened and they brought us to the hospital. The driver of the 70-seater bus was nowhere to be found soon after the deadly accident. Remember that night when the accident occurred, nobody saw the driver. The driver had disappeared. We don't know where, but the motorboy was there. He had some few bruises. Passengers in another bus stopped to give the helpless a helping hand. Our bus uh, driver had to pull over and rush there to help the injured. In the meantime, Unconfirmed information say the death toll has increased to 15. And more than 100 candidates in the conflict hit southwest region of Cameroon have traveled to the west region to take part in the baccalaureate examination that began across the national territory. That was yesterday. The students who could not sit in for the examinations in Lebialem are now being hosted at GBHS Chang amid tight security. Let's have the details in the following report. Day one of baccalaureate examination in Chang, West region of Cameroon. At the center of GBHS Chang, 171 candidates who escaped the socio-political unrest in neighboring Libyalem division were present. 79 of the students expected did not show up. These candidates are déplacés with their surveillance and their chef de sous-centre qui euh, sont les proviseurs. Security forces were deployed on campus to guarantee the safety of the students. Besides the elements of the National Defense Forces guarding the campus by day, there is a vigilante committee put in place to check and contain any eventuality in the day and at night. Et tout le campus est cadré par les forces de l'ordre. Et au niveau interne, nous avons mis sur pied un comité the chief of center explains that enough measures were not put in place to facilitate the identification and accommodation of the additional students from the conflict hit southwest region. Il y a des candidats qui nous viennent du Libyalem qui ont pu être casés à ce niveau ci Ça fait donc un petit dérangement en termes d'identification, d'orientation. At Lycée Classic Chang, similar security measures have been put in place by the education and administrative officials. Compte tenu de la situation actuelle, toutes les dispositions sécuritaires ont été prises. 
par nous-mêmes et par les autorités. Though in a tense atmosphere, the kickoff of the baccalaureate examination in the French subsystem of education was hitch free in the town of Chang. We now take a look at the level of disorder in the commercial motorbike sector here in the economic capital Dual and the efforts put in place so far by local administrative authorities to put an end to the situation. A case study tonight, or a case study tonight is the Douala to subdivision with Babla Jonathan. Disorder in the commercial motorbike sector in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, has become a hard nut just too difficult to crack by public authorities. Over the years, administrative authorities have been struggling to put order in the sector to no avail. In the Douala 2 subdivision, Mayor Denis Fampu is stepping up efforts to put order in the commercial motorbike sector. She told them that government is concerned about their situation and wants the sector to be organized. It is for this purpose that she has continued urging them to ensure that they are individually identified. More than 500 of them converge on the council premises for the identification exercise. This trade union leader says it was an uphill task to bring such a huge number of commercial motorbike riders together because many of them are not interested in the identification exercise. Identification documents have been given to the different leaders to coordinate the identification exercise and bring back the forms to the council Friday. And the question by observers is, are uh, administrative authorities in the littoral region of Cameroon powerless before perpetrators of urban disorder? Some are vendors of the Marche New Day Do that have continued selling along the pavements after drastic measures put in place by the division officer for the Douala 1 subdivision. A reporter, Franklin Mwabe, who was at the Marche New Day Do, tells us in the following stories that, or the following report, that the traders advanced several reasons. His report. Pied measures by the divisional officer of Douala one weeks ago to stop vendors from selling along the road. The always jammed and busy new Dido market has extended its limits into the main road again. These traders who were chased away by the divisional officer have come back. They are again occupying the pedestrian path and even the section of road reserved for vehicles and motorbikes. Hence, movement of vehicles and bikes remain difficult and slow through the stretch of road running across the market. Our mission is to count empty places in the market that can contain all the traders selling outside. Vendors of the new Daido market say they decided to return and continue selling along the road because the location where the divisional officer asked them to move to is a dead zone, which is usually flooded in the rainy seasons. We have returned because there are no places in the market and even when you find a place you have to pay before displaying your goods because it has been abandoned for two or three years now. Angered by the commission dispatched for the deal's office to redress the issue, the vendors have rejected the administrative injunction to stop selling along the road. They have vowed to continue selling along the stretch of road until the administration makes the place of their relocation comfortable to their businesses. And some gender promoters in Boya, South West region of Cameroon, have underscored the need for young girls at puberty age to be guided and assisted during their menstrual period. They organized a seminar in the city to educate young girls on some of the healthy attitudes to be adopted, especially during this period in a young woman's life. Derek Jato tells us more in this report. About menstrual health. So we are here today to raise awareness about menstrual hygiene. To talk to you guys, to talk to you, my dear sisters and brothers, too, 
because it's a collective issue. Studies have revealed that most girls within the puberty stage are left to themselves at their first menstruation. Most of them, sometimes they use uh, materials which are not uh, healthy for them. Some of them use toilet tissues, they use dirty pieces of cloth when they are menstruating and uh, this can cause an infection. And as the Southwest region joined the rest of the world to celebrate the World Menstrual Day that comes up every 28th day of May witness a conference to empower especially the girl child on menstrual hygiene. Okay, I'll be talking about the process, the menstrual cycle in its process. What happens when a woman is on her period, she feels very uncomfortable. So how do you do to maintain that hygiene? You need to bath yourself like three times a day. Organized by Rising Hope Foundation for Change at Hotback Orphanage in Boya, its president, Mr. Mbinja Clovet, says his team chose this orphanage because the children here are more vulnerable. We support orphans, physically challenging individuals, vulnerable women and their child. So this venue is ideal for us because we want to empower these young ladies. A gesture well lauded by the management of the said orphanage. So I'm so happy and I'm so grateful for the fact that they did not just come to speak, but they came practically to hand the sanitary towels or napkins for the girls. To Madam Judith Mofa, Southwest Regional Delegate of Women Empowerment and the Family, menstrual health education should be encouraged at all levels. No. And uh, the young girls who are just menstruating for the first time, if they are not taught how to manage this, uh, uh, the process of menstruation, they may lead to some problems. I want to appreciate the uh, whole prizing for choosing Hot Peck to uh, celebrate this day. First of all, these children who are in hot tech are vulnerable. Staff were distributed to participants at the end of the day. And that is how the 2018 edition of the World Menstrual Day was celebrated in Boya, the Southwest Regional Capital. Another campaign is now underway to restore what is now being described as the lost language of the Bakwiri people. Mokwe is hardly being used by several Bakwiri youths in and out of the national territory. Members of the Bakwiri Youth Association say that the modernity or that modernity is responsible for the gradual disappearance of the Bakwiri language. Derek Jato tells us more once again. A random sampling has revealed that today eight in every ten Bakwiri youths cannot effectively communicate in their mother tongue, the Mokwe language. Um, it's very difficult. I cannot speak back. So it's like sometimes difficult. And when strangers come to the house, we are forced to speak in English when we want to hide something from the stranger who cannot hide it. And if the language of a people is their identity, then civilization is gradually eroding the Bakore identity away. Well, um, we discovered that the 21st century has brought about a lot of change. And the change is affecting all our African customs and culture. Given that we had a, a university in Boya, most of the people who came in have influenced our language, so it has become difficult for, for you to hear Bakwere youth actually speak the language. But can the Bakwere Youth Association, Baya, fight back to bring the Mokwe language on the lips of every Bakwere youth? Mulangale, Baya's president, says it is possible. Bakure is not dead. The Mokwe language is still alive. And we can, as youth, strive to preserve it to eternity. So the day the Lord shall call us. And to match what with action, Mokwe language classes have been going on in Boya for some time now for the Bakure youth. And they teach us the language from there. People pick up. At least I can write a few words, I can read something and understand in Mokwe. And today to test knowledge, a debate in Mokwe language is organized in one of their classes. So today we're here to hold a debate titled Monye Mowakwe Mojani Monami, which is literally translated as the Fakulan has brought about richness. Janu Obaya, which means come to Baya, was the message sent out there to other Bakwere youth to come, protect and promote their culture, their language, which is their identity from fading away. 
And that brings us to the end of this first segment of the news. Up next is Talking Point. Tonight, we are having as guest the barrister at law and the president of the Reform Party in Cameroon, Barrister Ashu Abo. Emano, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Good evening, Mimi. Good evening, to Thank you so much once again for coming. Barrister, the call for President Obia to seek re election is almost general within the circles of traditional rulers across Cameroon. A few days ago, we were talking about uh, traditional rulers in the littoral region of the country, uh, the south region. We heard of those of the northwest and the southwest regions and across the national territory. The state media today announced that all traditional rulers in Cameroon has sent a motion of support to the President of the Republic. As an opposition leader and aspiring uh, uh, president in the country, what do you have to say about that? Well, it's no secret that all the traditional rulers in Cameroon are on the payroll of the Minister of Territorial Administration. So what we are seeing is simply a, a manifestation of belly politics. Is that a reflection of the aspirations of Cameroonians it's sim today. It's, simple, a it's simply a manifestation of belly politics. These people have certainly be been threatened that their allowances will not be paid, so they have to sign any nonsense. So they, they are doing so for financial benefits? Is that what they are saying? all on the payroll of the Minister of Territorial Administration? They all have salaries paid by the minister, so by that ministry. So it's very easy for the minister to manipulate and say, Look, if you don't sign this thing there will be no salary is that what many cameroonians today would want for president pobia to stand as candidate during the 2018 presidential election well if mr bia is going to stand as president he will be doing so because a political party has presented him as a candidate not because chiefs have, have presented him as a candidate i mean so, cameroonians in general because you're an opposition leader in cameroon and you have already announced your candidacy as uh, candidate or uh, to run or are your intention to run for the presidential election in the country well what? Cameroonians as a whole want Mr. Bia to take his retirement and uh, allow younger people to go ahead with the uh, uh, with the go government governing of the country so I don't think it's a wise thing for anybody to manipulate chiefs to ask them to call Mr. Or Mr. Bia to run as a as a candidate because the chiefs are supposed to be apolitical in our society they are not supposed to belong to any traditional any uh, political party now if we have all the chiefs standing up to to identify themselves with uh, with a uh, uh, cpdm that simply means that they are not the, they're not going to be the chiefs when the other political parties come around their villages so that doesn't make them it doesn't make them chiefs so <laughs> they are not chiefs now the barrister another uh, a preoccupation for tonight would uh, be the general the uh, elections in Cameroon like we started talking about the elections management body that now has a new director general Eric Esuse that was put in place uh, just a few days ago by the president of the republic another curiosity is the fact that the mandate of the outgoing director general of elections Cameroon is not yet expired Abdullah Babali was supposed to be there for two more years before being replaced from, I'm counting, from the year where, when he was appointed in 2015. Many say that it is in total violation of the law. What does the law say, Bar Barista? Well, we, we all saw that uh, the personnel of ELECAM was agitating that the director of uh, ELECAM was misappropriating funds. And before he was removed, we saw that some of the offices had been sealed and the police were at, uh, uh, invested the, pre the premises. So I'm very sure that one of these days we'll hear uh, that there is something in the pipeline against him to, to be sent to the Special Criminal Court. Uh, I think the President of the Republic who appoints this uh, personality is at will, is at liberty to appoint whom he wills, when he wills. Even when the mandate of the former no, no, is not No, no, he's not expired. obliged. He's not obliged to wait for the mandate to end, especially when you have persistent calls of uh, persistent uh, uh, alleged misappropriation coming from the staff it was not the public it's the staff that was clamoring for this man to be for something to be done because this man was siphoning funds and i i think one of uh, the ngos in Dwala also said it that elecam equipment is obsolete equipment is not being replaced 
And if they can't wait to go down to the field now to register voters, they will be unable to register everybody. Now, looking at the professional background of the incoming, what N do you have to say now, about uh, that? Are there it's, hopes? It's like calling a office to place at the center forward position. You see, Mr. Esuse has been director of elections in Minat for years until he went on retirement. And uh, he was taken now and sent to Elekam. So you are calling, uh, sending, calling as gen director general of elections the man who has been used to organizing, running elections in Cameroon. So uh, if, you want, if you want my opinion, this is a man who has been organizing elections and knows exactly all the looks, the, 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 the looks and corners of the electoral body in this country. As an opposition leader in Cameroon. I am not impressed by hope. any, I'm not impressed by any of that thing because Elekam is only in charge of voter registration and organizing the elections. When it comes to collecting the information and uh, transporting it to the to the constitutional council and proclaiming result election, ele Elekam is nowhere to be found. So I don't think the impact of Mr. Eric Esuse as director general of election can have anything to do if they want to if if their 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 gear, uh, aim is to organize fraud then they have they've lost it because uh, there is no meaningful fraud that can be organized at the level of voter registration and then the voting. Another major worry or a bigger challenge for elections Cameroon that uh, Abdullah Babale was actually talking about the delocalization of some polling stations in the north and the south regions as a result of the chaotic atmosphere. Do you think that elections Cameroon would be ready to organize elections in these two regions hit by crisis for close to two years now, Barista? Well, they have uh, they tried it with the senatorial elections. It's true that the you said they tried. They tried because they had they had to do with a handful of people, just a handful of councillors. So it was easy to transport them. But when it comes to moving an entire population, <laughs> I I am still to see how that will be done. But uh, you see, it is not possible to delocalize elections in the northwest and southwest. Uh, regions, especially when you have to, when you are dealing with council elections, legislative elections, these are elections wherein the votes are counted on the spot. You cannot delocalize them because every community counts its votes. If they are electing councillors, they have to be determined on the spot. You cannot delocalize. When you carry them to a different place, the entire population will have to follow there to this new site. Now, if your fear is that. Uh, the uh, the secessionists are going to attack. It will be worse if you go to a locality and they, they do come there and just plant a small bomb. I mean, you you'll be sacrificing many many lives. I, I think the right thing to do is for the government to look for solutions to this crisis before any elections can be organized. So, so you don't see any elections taking place hitch free. In, hitch free North elections? No, it's, that is a dream. We have to. He went to organize if even the senatorial elections were not his free, you see, and that that was just a limited election because it was uh, it was indirect. Now that we are going to direct universal suffrage, it's not going to be the same ball game. Uh, I think that the government should take things very seriously, especially as we have the international community putting its eyes on Cameroon now. Uh, we don't want uh, to to have a taste of international sanctions, economic sanctions, and all military sanctions and all those things. So please let them put an end to this conflict. I have given a series of proposals. I can still run, run them down. The government has been uh, quiet on the situation that is happening in its northern and southern uh, regions. I am saying that they should make real efforts to resettle the population that is in the bushes. Let them resettle this population. Think of compensating them. Try to, rec to, to recruit these boys who are in the bushes, who are, who are fighters. Let them look for a, put up a scheme to recruit them into the international army. And you see, call some uh, uh, inclusive dialogue to appease this population so that the country can go ahead together as one nation. Before the election... You cannot place. pretend no. that it is... Uh, going I'm ahead with relations without trying to appease the population is like pretending that there is no problem. And that is wrong. And Barista, you are of course a, a national candidate, but you hail from one of these uh, conflicted regions in the southwest region of Cameroon. Are you not worried about your situation because you've declared that you are going to run as presidential candidate? What is my situation? The situation uh, as an opposition leader wanting to be presidential candidate with the situation in the two Anglophone regions. Yes, the, the situation in the Anglophone regions can only be better if we have 
you know my position. I say that it is time for an Anglophone president. Uh, Francophones have ruled this country since independence. It is time for an Anglophone to be president. And if the people of Northern South Region see reason in what I'm saying, then they have to support me. Because uh, boycotting is not a solution. If I boycott, if I stay away like others, I will bring no solution. But if I stand as a candidate and all of them support me, then I have a very good chance of being the first Anglophone president who will run this country better in a better way and bring an end to their suffering. There are a good number of... Uh aspiring uh, pr pr presidential presidents in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon and uh, hoping that uh, the uh, electorates are possibly listening. Barista, before we go, we would want to get your reactions on the, uh, the Menka massacre as it's so far been described. It triggered the reaction of the national and international community and the Minister of Communication actually uh, talked about the government's uh, reaction or talked about, gave the government's stance during the press conference that took place just a few hours ago in the nation's capital. You've been able to gather all the facts as to what actually transpired in that part of the Northwest region of Cameroon. What do you have to say about that? Well, I have in mind the uh, pronouncements that were made by the, the army spokesman, Colonel Bajek. I also have in mind what the, the communique of the Minister of Communications, both of them congratulated the army for a job well done. And uh, I asked myself the question, is Cameroon a state of law? This country has a law on public order, on the maintenance of public order. And I think that the authorities of this country are supposed to respect the laws of this nation. Uh, what happened in Mecca was in total violation of the provisions of that law. Colonel Bajek and the minister, or both of them, told us that it was some person, some individual who denounced, who, who informed the army of the presence of Ambazonians in a hotel. And the army, they gave and the alert, and then the army gave the onslaught. You see, this is a, in total violation of the provisions of the law on the maintenance of public order. Because that law says the use of arms in the maintenance of public order is, or firearms, is prohibited. The unit that is intervening should use loudspeakers. When you reach there, they should warn the population with loudspeakers that they are about to intervene. None of that was used. From all their communications, we see that they were behaving as if they were at the battlefront and they were attacking an, an enemy. What they thought they turned to be an enemy. I don't know. What is an enemy doing in a hotel? A hotel is a place for leisure, for rest. What is an enemy doing in the hotel? Secondly, we are inside Cameroon. If they were in the north, I would say they are fighting against Boko Haram. They are inside Cameroon. When they came, there was no shooting of guns. Because when the military, when the, the security forces arrive at a place and there is any problem, any problem, when they hear gunshots, they are authorized also to give warning shots. There were no gunshots. So what was the reason why they didn't go into this hotel to arrest the people who were there simply? Why didn't they arrest the people? Why did they opt to kill the people? I remember what the chief said. The chief said in his communique that bandits and bandits had been terrorizing his village. This is the chief of the of Mecca who himself said it was not secessionist, it was armed, a group of armed bandits. And he went ahead to say these bandits took a television set from him and other property. We know that secessionists don't need a TV set in the bush. They don't watch TV in the bush. So they, they cannot go taking TV sets. They don't, they live in the bush, they don't, they cannot go living inside hotels. Why did the army decide to act illegally by disregarding the provisions of the law on the maintenance of public order? So I, I think that by reason of all that behavior, the Minister of Communication and the Minister of Defense ought to resign. But the Defense Ministry they uh, ought to resign says because that they some are, of them were armed. Congratulating the that some of them were armed. Done, whereas, no, you see, look, when these people came to the play, to the scene, there was no danger. There was no, nobody was in danger. There was no person in peril. There was no fight. I said there was no reason for the use of arms. I am calling on the government to respect our laws. 
our laws, especially the one on the maintenance of public order, prescribe a code of conduct. They were supposed to use loudspeakers and then to intervene peacefully, proceed by arresting. Why did they avoid all that and go to kill? So I am saying that for congratulating people who have done a bad job, the Minister of Communication and the Minister of Defense ought to resign. Thank you so much, Barrister, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have you some other time again. You're welcome. To our viewers, it was equally a pleasure having you with us in this edition of the Prime Time Newscast on Equinox Television, wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.